Russia, and he was talking about how he hears Americans say that um, this is not a Christian country anymore. And he said, you don't know what it's like to live in a non-Christian country. He said, this is still a Christian country. And he said, um, I had people hate me because I was a Baptist in Russia when I was growing up. He said, the police will come at your house 3 o'clock in the morning and confiscate Bibles and put you in jail. He said, I've been in jail three times because I'm a Christian. Um, and it's like the reason why our world, our country, excuse me, is slipping, I believe, is because of the lack of discipleship. Um, whether it be uh, you discipling someone else, or you being accountable to the doctrine, to the teachings, to the principles, and to uh, personal responsibility of being a disciple of Christ. And uh, uh, if, we, if we would just do what we know to do, regardless of how much of the book you do know, um, you, you have to, like, not conform to this world. We are always faced with challenges. And a lot of times, most of those challenges come to us based on our individual increase. Like, if I compromise this, I'll increase. And if I increase, then why is that not a good thing? But if it goes against the principles of God, you, you, you have to have some uh, restraint. And um, the book says, all that's in the world is the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And a lot of times, we'll overcome the lust of our eyes. All that means is that we just turn our head, right? The lust of the flesh, we see something, we start lusting about it. We turn our head, our minds are still pondering on it. We overcome it because we don't act upon it. But then the pride of life is so sneaky. It is so sneaky because it appeals to greed. It appeals to pride. It appeals to uh, uh, false growth, right? All these kind of things. And it's like, if I accept this in my life, I will be better. But if it compromises the things of God, or your personal convictions. Let's, let's even go that far. Because a lot of times, what I'm convicted in, you're not convicted in, and it may be okay for you. But for me, it's just not okay. Or for you, it's not okay. And so those personal convictions are areas where God's trying to tell you this is your boundary. If you're convicted about it, just because someone else is doing it doesn't mean that you do it. And so you have to have some some uh, uh, self-accountability. Like, you, you, you have to govern yourself with this thing. And, and you, you know, a lot of times we look at discipleship where, that we, we, it's each one teach one, we're teaching someone else. But, but the Bible always says if you're going to teach, wait on teaching, right? Be taught. And um, it, you, you know, I could sit up here and, 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 and minister and teach the word till I'm blue in the face. But if I'm not living it, um, it's, it's holding no power in my personal life. Uh, I, I can teach you something, right? I can teach you something. You can apply it, and it works powerfully in your life. But the same word that I'm teaching, if I don't live it, it won't work powerfully in my life. And how can you have the audacity to teach something that you won't live. And um, because it's so easy to minister to someone else's problems, right? It is very, very easy to say, well, if I was you, I would do this, this, and this. 
or the Bible says, if you do this, this, and this is the results, and you see that result. But when that same issue comes into your life, it's not that you don't have the heart to do it. It's hard to do the exact thing that you said to do. But when you understand who you are in Christ Jesus, then you make that effort to be who you're supposed to be in Christ Jesus. Amen? And so uh, counseling sessions with me, um, I don't know how other counseling sessions have been with other pastors. I don't know how they do it. But with me, um, I just try to find out what you already know about your situation. And what you already know about your situation is telling me you already have the answer. You really don't need me. But let's sit down anyway, and let's go through it. See, see this self-accountability is you holding yourself accountable to be the disciple that you're supposed to be. See, see, see a, a lot of times discipleship, and, 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 and it probably will appear this way today, that discipleship means that you get to a certain level of walk. It's not. The day that you got saved, you should be on your way to uh, a different kind of living. However long that takes is based on your walk. And if you take a long time to get somewhere, it's not because God empowered somebody else and didn't empower you. It's because you didn't appropriate what you were supposed to appropriate, right? So the first, the first section of this one is, is, is this, this part of discipleship is, is to receive teaching, right? To receive teaching. And a lot of times we will hear teaching but we don't receive teaching. And by hearing teaching and not receiving teaching is, uh, it's frustrating for me as a pastor that like I have to keep going over and over things and, and like you come to me and be like, I know, right? But, but, but it's more detrimental to you because if you have the answer and don't live the answer, and then you get an outcome, the first thing we want to do is blame God, blame the church, blame the teaching. I'm not getting fed no more. Oh, you were fed. You threw it up. You threw it up. What, what's, that, what's that disease you have when, when, when you throw up, you eat the food, huh? No, not reflux. Yeah, 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 that one. You eat, and then you go in the mirror, and, and, and you know, you know what the Bible says in uh, First Peter, it talks about adding to your faith virtue, and virtue, uh, 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 patience, and patience, godliness, and it goes on, and brotherly kindness, and then it says, he whoever has these things in him abounds, but he who, who lacks these things forgets who he was, that he was purged from his old sins. And it's like, it's like if you live long enough without receiving the teaching, you could be a Christian but not feel like one. You could be a Christian and not live like one. And the reason why is, is because you're not adding on to yourself, one. It's not that you didn't hear the teachings. It's not that you don't know that you should worship, praise, read your Bible. Uh, be kind to others, operate in love. It's not that you don't know these things. It's the fact that you don't appropriate these things. And so because you don't appropriate these things, when you look in the mirror, you think that you lack the things that you need to walk the way you need to walk. And this is what we say, I need to go back to church. Much, probably. Or... You just need to appropriate what you know. Because if you do that, then you walk in what? The power of God. You walk, listen to me, listen to me. We make the power of God this grand thing, right? Like the light needs to shine down on me. The clouds need to separate. I need to hear harps from heaven. I need to see angels descend down through the light, right? and then rest on my shoulders, and then hover around me, right? But the glory of God, the power of God, is not to tell a lie. The glory of God, the power of God, is to not steal anymore. 
right? The glory of God, the power of God is to not cuss anymore when you want to cuss, right? <laughs> huh? I told you I can hear him. I just don't say him, right? That's the power of God. To be a cusser and hear cuss words. Like, I was, I was good. I was real good, Cornelius. You believe it? Oh, you was a good cusser too? All right? But I received teaching. I didn't throw that part up. How can blessings and curses come out of the same mouth? All right? But see, but see, but see when, you, when, you, when you separate yourself and you start moving away from consistent teaching... Consistent. What's the first principle of teaching? What's the second principle of teaching? Teaching. Teaching. What's the third principle? When you remove yourself from those things, right? When you remove, I've been saying that for seven years. When you remove yourself from those things, all of a sudden you start finding yourself doing things that you would, that you know you should not be doing. Right, right? Because, because, because the Bible says that, 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 that the weeds, right? When, when you talk about the parable of sowers, it says the lust, of, uh, the, 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 the lust of other things enter in and choke the word of God. And what happens is that the word of God is supposed to produce something in you. But when you allow other things to creep in and choke what's supposed to be produced, you start hindering the power of God in your life. And so, and so you don't want to hinder the power of God. You want to receive the teaching. Come on, next slide. You want to receive the teaching. And so, and so Colossians 2, 6, it says, As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk you in him. And so this, received, this word received is, is, is a teaching word. It's not necessarily as, as receiving like a gift, like, like, like you, you, you may give me. Jaleesa brought me a bag today, right? And, and, and she said, here, pastor. And then she waited for me to look at it, right? Like, like, I can't take it home and look at it. And then, because I didn't look at it right away, she wanted to explain to me what it was, right? <laughs> right? And, 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 and that's okay. But, but what I'm talking about is that this receiving is not like that. This is a teaching. This is teaching. Like he says, as you therefore receive Christ Jesus, as therefore you received Christ Jesus. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. The day you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he is a rabbi. He is a teacher. He is the Messiah. The Holy Spirit immediately begins to teach. Immediately. Immediately begins to teach you. He begins to start teaching you through conviction. He begins to start teaching you through separation of mind. Like, like, like okay, I, I, I do this. But now, all of a sudden, what you used to do is not right anymore. And you know it. And you know it's not right. He has immediately started to teach you. So he says, as you therefore receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk you in him. Like, like, like as the teachings come, as, as the teachings come, like you have to start like changing lanes. As the teachings come, you start have to have to apply the teachings. All right, come on, next slide. Look at this. Look at this. It says, to receive, to formally receive authoritative teaching as, a, as, a, as from an approved source. God is an approved source. The Greek word for this is to, is to receive, to formally receive authoritative teaching as from an approved source. So, so you know, years ago, um, Pastor Mincy had me come preach, um, and it was called he had me preach on the apostolic mandate. I was like, what is that? Apostolic mandate. And so, and so what I did was I, I, I wouldn't study it. Of course, you know me. I, I wouldn't study what an apostolic mandate is. And what I found out about the apostolic mandate is, is that God approves the teacher. We look at ordinations as an approved source Right? I've walked in the pulpits. I've walked in the churches after I became a minister, and I stepped up in the pulpit, and I've had pastors stop me. Urch, are you ordained? And I'd say, yes or no at the time. Well, if you're not ordained, please sit in the front row. Right? And see, what, it, what, ha what has happened in the church is that the church wants the ordination, the church wants the ordination to be the approved source, but in actuality, be, because of the apostolic mandate, 
God has already approved you. John 15, 16 says, you did not choose me, that I chose you and ordained you, that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit shall remain. And whatsoever you ask me in the Father's name, I'll give unto you, right? That's what John 15, 16 says. But a lot of times, we want the proof of ordination. And so what happens is, we go through the process to show the world that we are approved of God, but the teaching, discipleship teaching, happens more in pews than it does in pulpits. And if you learn who you are approved by God, not approved by man, you will do more ministry in pulpits, in streets, I mean in, 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 in pews, and in streets, and at work, and on your job, and in, in parks, and at grocery stores. You will live the life that you're supposed to live based on who you've been called by instead of what you think the church expects out of you. And there's a responsibility that comes along with this thing that we call discipleship. Because if we don't do what we know that we're supposed to do, then we just throw away the teachings of God. Come on, next slide. He said, Ephesians 4, he says, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord. This is the receiving section. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Let, let, let me tell you something. This, this, this. This is where we get jealous, right? We see other people do things, and then we think, like, if they can do it, and I should be able to do it. Like, like for instance, uh, I, l listen, if I happen to step on your toes today, right, it's not because I, I want to use, sir, I, I want to use two things, and then I, I, I heard you can't use that because they're going to feel like you're talking about them. If I see another Christian smoking weed, if I see another Christian at a restaurant having a drink, should I be able to have that too? Should I be able to smoke weed too? Huh? No. Why? Huh? What did God say? God ain't really say nothing. Huh? Do I feel personal about it? How do I feel personally about it? Mm -hmm. You don't think I should do it if God told me no? So, so what if God didn't tell you no? Yeah, for, 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 for us, right? But, 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 but what, if God, what if God never told you not to have a drink or smoke weed? Is it okay? Why not? Why not? If God, if God personally convicted me and not personally convicted you, why is it not okay for you too? Why is it not okay for them? Because you got a personal. See, see, now you're projecting your stance onto someone else. It's not about anybody else. It's not about anybody else. It's about you. It's about. It's about how you feel. So, 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 so. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I just asked the question that if someone else drinks and smokes weed, is it okay for them? No. no. Okay. Any drinkers and smoke weeders in here? How you? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just gonna answer. Don't answer. Don't answer. Don't answer. Huh? Where's the, where's the smoke weeder? What is a smoke weeder? <laughs> huh? It says, this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, in the emptiness of their mind. And see, what, what I'm getting at is, is that God may not have personally convicted you about something, or he may have, and you just not receiving the conviction. But, but, but the thing about it is, is that our, it, the, how powerful is your testimony? <laughs> you know, you should come to church with me. I know how to do it. I used to do it. You, you know, you should come to church with me Sunday because, you know, pastor be really teaching. Huh? You want to counter that? Go ahead. Come on. You guilty. <laughs> Shh, don't tell on yourself. <laughs> huh? Come on. Let's have class today. Come on. Mm -hmm. 
I'm talking about weed, not cigarettes. Okay, well, So, so, so God needs a cigarette to use yeah. you to minister. Hold on, hold on once. Hold on. I gave you a space. Hold on. So, so, so we're, we're saying that, like, if you're not in the right place at the right time, that person might not be ministered to. I disagree. I disagree because whatever's in the plan and purpose of God will happen, right? God will make sure someone's in the right place at the right time. See, see, if we go back to last week, Paul said, all things are lawful for me. Like, I can do whatever I want as a Christian. I'm under grace. I'm not under no laws, right? All things are lawful for me, but all things don't edify. And the power of your testimony, the power of your testimony is how we overcome, right? It, it, this, this, is, this is the thing. This is the thing. Like, like, like we overcome by the blood of the land and the, the lamb and the word of our testimony. If, 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 if you are operating in a, in a vice and enjoying it in front of someone that you're trying to win to Christ, that's, 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 that's not a, that's not a, and, and, and listen, it, it, it stretches gluttony, lying, jealousy, stealing. I mean, there's so much stuff that you need to just, just suppress in you. Not saying that you have to be perfect, but there's some things that you need to just suppress, right? Especially if you're in a place that you need to witness to someone. Because, because, because we're trying to win people to Christ with, uh, we're trying to win people to Christ who is perfect and we are imperfect people who have issues, right? right? We have issues, right? And so because we have issues, it doesn't mean you flaunt your issues in front of people because you need to deal with yourself. The very one of the first things I was talking about was being accountable, self-accountability. Like, 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 like you have to govern yourself. And if you know it's wrong, then stop. Don't flaunt in it, well, you know, God ain't done with me yet. Or make excuses and reservations. I had a rough day today, so I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. Who else doesn't have a rough day? Right? I would love a nice, cold Heineken sometime with the, you know, condensation sliding down the bottle, right? <laughs> I'm, that's a commercial, you know. The thing just, every once in a while, I would, right? But I don't. And the reason why I don't is because I need to minister at home, too. My sons need to see a consistent no drinking in my house by me. My sons need to see that. that my sons are grown, and I need to be consistent in front of them, Right? And so because I need to be consistent in front of them, just because, listen, because I could go to any state that y'all not in and go buy a beer, creep into a 7-Eleven somewhere on some back road, buy a beer and go home, right? And lock my door, put it in my duffel bag. They won't even see it. Lock my door and, and, and use my teeth. I don't even need a can opener. I know how to do that, right? And drink a beer in the confines of my bedroom. But I don't, and the reason why is, is because it's not about me getting away with something, it's about me walking in the power of God. I suppress myself. I don't suppress the truth of God in me, I suppress Jamal so the truth can live within me. Does this make sense? And so, and so what you have to understand is, is that you're gonna see people do things that you desire to do but because you are working on yourself and there's some accountability that you walk not as other Gentiles walk, right? That you walk not as other Christians walk. That you walk not the way people who live lascivious lifestyles walk. Like, like, like you can look out your window in the world. Like, like, like I remember writing a devotional and, and in the devotional, I pictured myself sitting, looking out of the window. And as I looked out of the window, I was watching, I, uh, to the scripture right here, I was watching the world, like, just live any kind of way that they wanted. And, and, and because I used to write devotionals Monday through Friday before we started church. And, and, and I, was looking, I was looking out of the window in my mind, and I was saying, man, people are living any kind of way they want to live. They're doing any kind of thing they want to do. They're lying, they're cheating, they're stealing, they're drinking. And, and, and these are the, all the things that, that I used to do. Right. 
And now it says, this I say for and, and testify in the Lord that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the emptiness of their mind. And it's like, if you are filled with the Spirit of God, if the, if the Holy Spirit dwells within you, how can you, how can you not hear God when you do certain things? You, you, you see what I mean? How can you be numb to Holy Spirit and say that you're a Christian? There is no way you should be numb to Holy Spirit when you say that you're a Christian. Like, 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 like I can't get around God. I can't. It's like, it's like, it, it's like a pebble in the ocean. You just, you have no win with God. And so because we have no win with God, we can't use the vices of other people to make excuse. We can't use the advancement of ourselves to make an excuse to do what we know that we're not supposed to do. Because a lot of times, because of our advancement, we will thwart or disregard or push aside responsibility so that we feel better. And it's not about us feeling better. It's not about our comfort. It's about the glory of God. And so because it's about a gl the glory of God making Jesus famous, when it's about that, when your life is about somebody else receiving the same teaching that you did, then your life is powerful. You could go to work Monday through Friday and not have anything going on. And someone's watching you and their life is changing based on what they see. They are secretly watching you. Listen to me. Listen to me, when they know that you go to church, when, they, when you start talking about my church did this and my church did this and this is what the pastor said and they see you with, the little, with your little uh, cross on your and your little sayings on your cubicle and all that stuff that you got up, right? When they start seeing that stuff, they start watching you because they want an excuse not to be convicted. And they're using you, they are using you for their place of uh, conviction or not conviction. You are the closest thing to God that they see, and how you operate ministers to them. And if you are ministering to them, because if you think that you're not ministering to them based on, on your actions, you got another thing coming. Because I'm telling you, the world is watching you with a microscope, and they are waiting for you to fail so they don't have to choose God for themselves. And it's a terrible thing that people are, are, are using you secretly to deny God. And so your walk, your habitual walk, next slide, your habitual walk matters. He says, having the understanding dark and being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Listen to me, you in a situation, let's use Jaleesa's situation again, right? Listen, but, but I'm going back to, 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 I mean, I know weed's becoming legal and, and it's going to be hard for me to talk about the illegal things, but, but, but regardless, alcohol is not illegal. You, you, you know what I mean? And, and if, if that's the case, having to understand it dark and being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. You got a person standing here that does not know Jesus, and you standing here who knows Jesus. You're not alienated from the life of God. Your understanding is not darkened. You, you, are, you are not ignorant and your heart is not blind. But you're doing the same thing that they're doing. You're doing the exact same thing that they're doing. You have a relationship with God and they have every excuse not to hear you testify to them because the next day, the, because the sun's out and it's 78 degrees and the wind's blowing and you feel good and you thank God for a glorious day and you didn't operate with them the second day that you choose to minister to them. But let me tell you something, the day before minister to them more than the day that you choose to talk about God. Because, and the reason why is, is because they have no light. They have no light. And because they have no light, you are the only light that they see. And if you are the only light that they see, you're going to have to choose to shine in their life. Because if you do not choose to shine in their life, you cause them to be even in a darker place. God could have easily taken us when he saved us, but he left us here to be disciples. He left us here for this particular generation right now in this period of time. In this dispensation of time, it is our responsibility to do what God has charged us to do. And if we do not do what God has charged us to do, it listen, listen to me. 
Ministry does not happen just based on what I'm doing right now. Ministry happens like this. And it's our responsibility individually. Listen to me. You cannot have the knowledge of God in a very powerful way and choose to live the way you want to live because it's comfortable for you. You cannot. And you need to do something about it. You need to do something about it because the world is dying. And you're the only Jesus that the world sees sometimes. Me and Antoine was out last night. Wake up. I kept you out too late? Me and Antoine was out on the corner till like 1130 last night. In the corner of Park Place and in, in, in Bethel Street and North Street. We're standing right there. About 10 cars walked by, rode by. Hey, Pastor Jamal. Hey, Pastor Jamal. Hey, Pastor Jamal. Right? They didn't stay too long, though, did they? <laughs> Not too long at all. You know how many nights when, when me and Teresa used to drive different cars to work to church on, on Tuesdays, how I would say, babe, I'd be home, and I'd leave and go out on the block like 9 o'clock to like 11, 30, 12 o'clock. Hey, Pastor Jamal. Hey, Pastor Jamal. Hey, Pastor Jamal. People stood right there and did their thing right in front of me. Didn't care, right? No conviction. What if I? What if I would have added on to it? What? What if I? What if I? Because there has been plenty of nights I walked through a cloud of smoke. Like, dang, that smells good, right? I talked to somebody last night. I said, boy, you smell. You smell kind of good. He said, man, I got a medical marijuana card. <laughs> I said, I don't care what you got. You smell good. What if, what if, what if, what if I just say, cause, because I, I can tell you something. I smoke weed from 14 to 33. I'm uh, tomorrow I'll be, um, 48. <laughs> tomorrow I'll be 48. But I can tell you, I still love it. I just don't do it, right? And I know what smells good to me and what's not. But what's more powerful is my witness than anything, right? And so, and so what I'm getting at is, is that if, if these people are alienated from the life of God, look at this, man. Look what you have. Look what you have. You have the life of God. And you choose to live a debased lifestyle because it's comfortable for you. God says that he has put us in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You're going to have to choose whether you want to live a debased lifestyle and miss out on the power of God or you live a heightened lifestyle and be, and be exalted by God, not yourself, but exalted by God so you can be responsible with the things that God has given you. And, 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 and a lot of times we choose to dumb down our life and, 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 and a lot of times it's just self-esteem. A lot of times it's just self-esteem. Like, 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 like the world won't look at me the same if I walk with God. And so because the world doesn't look at me the same because I don't walk with God, I got to put on the world instead of putting on God. You, you, you see what I'm saying? I got to put on the world because I want the world to see me right. Does it really matter? Does it really matter how the world sees you? Because the world doesn't have a hell to put you in or heaven, but if you keep playing with the world. <laughs> Come on, next slide. Who being past feeling had given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. Like, like, like you probably see some crazy greediness in the world. And it's like, it's like, do I compromise? L listen to me. Do I compromise to advance? Do I compromise to advance? Because let me tell you something. When you compromise one time, and, and listen, listen, when you compromise once and you get away with it, th th this, this is what happens on the inside. Like, hmm. And you compromise again. And you're still convicted. And you compromise again, but you're still convicted, but it's not as strong. 
then you compromise again. And then all of a sudden, it's like, God ain't saying nothing. No, he said it. He's already said it. He's already said it. A long time ago, he said it. You read it a long time ago. But you keep compromising, and as you keep co compromising, you start, you start now becoming numb to God and to the things of God, and you become wide open to the world. And you got to stop compromising on the things of God for your own advancement. Come on, next slide. Let's, let, let, look at this. It says, but you have not so learned Christ. He said, if you operate this like this, you didn't never learn Jesus. You never applied it. You heard it, but you never applied it. And if you only applied it for a season, did you really learn it? How long ago did you learn how to tie your shoes? Oh, you, learned, you, you received that teaching. How, how long ago did they take the training wheels off your bike? Like you might not have been on a bike in 15 years. <laughs> Stationary. <laughs> you ain't not been on a bike in a long time. But I guarantee you, if you go get, if, if that's the only means of transportation and you need to get the A to Z, you could probably jump on that bike and go, right? Well, the reason why is because you learned it. <laughs> they, was doing a, they was doing a wobble wobble last night. They was doing that last night. Do you see them? Just carnal. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Have a good time. I don't care. But you have not so learned Christ. But you have not so learned. Man, look at that. It's, like, it's saying like, yeah, I know you're a Christian. Go back to the first slide of that. Go back to the first slide and then come back to this one. He says, this I say, therefore, testify in the Lord that you henceforth not walk as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of your mind. Next slide, 18. But, yeah, having the understanding dark and being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Next slide. Look, who being past feeling, they don't even feel convicted anymore. You don't even feel convicted. You're doing what you do and you don't even feel no issue with it. Who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness. Like, like life with no restraints, I'm going to do what I want to do. To work all uncleanliness with greediness. Like it's all about you. It's not about how anybody else feels. It's about you. It's not about your witness, but it's about you. Next slide. I don't care how many scriptures you could quote. I don't care how much time you read the Bible. If you don't apply the word, you haven't learned it. You can know how to tie your shoes, but walk around with your shoes untied all the time. Does that make sense? Why don't you tie your shoes? I don't, I don't, I don't want to. Well, you, you, you're messing up your shoestrings. They'll be all right. I'll get another pair. God will forgive me. We're under grace, right? I can do what I want to do, right? It just makes no sense. It says, but if so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. Next slide. Walk in him. Walk in him. See, 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 this is, this is what I'm getting at. This is what I'm getting at. Like, to receive the teaching and not apply the teaching. Did you really get the teaching? See, 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 what happens on Sunday, what happens on Sunday, what I teach you on Sunday should become a part of your life forever. No matter how many times you've heard it, it should become a part of your life forever. It should become a part of your life forever. How long? Forever. Right, it should become a part of your life forever. And listen, you can forget the lesson. You can forget the words that come out of my mouth. But the principle that happened, the, the, the doctrine, the precepts that happen, is what should be applied. There should be some subconscious things that change within you when the word of God goes forth. You have to take on this thing where, where you consciously hear it, because this is what teaching does. I just taught you this for like six months. This is what happens. When we are taught something, it becomes, it goes down into our subconsciousness. If you don't accept it based on your level of faith, it will not become a part of you. You got to break through the subconscious level. You got to take something that's conscious and break through the subconscious level because if you don't break through the subconscious level, it does not become a part of you. Listen, the trauma that you faced when you was a kid has become a part of you. Think about a dog that was beat as a puppy with one owner. L listen, I beat my dog with my belt before. Crack! 
Why? I have. I did, right? She just kept, she just kept pooping all over the place, and I'd rub her nose in it, and it didn't work. After I popped her one time with my belt, it did. But every time I go to put my belt on, she hears the buckle, and she moves. This morning, this morning, I'm putting my belt on, and she's laying right beside me. All of a sudden, I see her trot with them ears back. <laughs> that happened years ago. That happened years ago. But every time she hears the belt buckle, she runs, right? How many things have happened to you subconsciously that you run from? You, you, you see what I'm saying? And so now, so now this walking in God has to, has to come, this receiving God comes to rewire you, but, but, but to walk in him is to apply what the rewiring has done. And so, and so now the receiving part is I'm teaching you something, right? Now you have to receive it. The test comes when you leave here today. The test comes when you leave here today. As soon as you leave here, something's going to be presented to you that goes against what you know that you're supposed to do. How do you now operate? Do you choose you or do you choose God? Come on, next slide. Walk in him. Back to Colossians. As you therefore receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Next slide. Jesus is the life element. Walk includes an agreement, external and internal mode of conduct in life. So if Jesus is the source, the element of life, how are we going to choose to live our life? Do we choose to live our life based on what I want to do, or do I choose to live the way God wants me to do? Because let me tell you something. Anyone that you bring into your little private circle, where you do things that are not like God, you show them something that you really are not. You are a Christian, regardless of what you do. You are a, listen to me, you are a Christian before your race. God overrides race. God overrides race. You are a Christian. Because if that was the case, he would only save the Jews, right? He overrides race. The Bible says in Matthew 28, preach to every ethnos. Teach every ethnos, all nations. So he doesn't really care about your skin color. He wants to know about what's going on in your heart. And so, and so if he's the element, when you invite somebody into your little circle, watch how, watch how you walk in front of them. Because this is an habitual word. This is not a Sunday word. This is an oars verb. This verb is ongoing. This is not about, this is not about what I show them on Sunday. This, this, this is not... It ain't about that. And then on Monday, you... I, I ain't got that no more. I never did dance like that. I was thinking about that little girl in the hallway when his daddy said, do the stanky leg. <laughs> I ain't never did no stanky leg. I was too cool for stanky leg. Come on, next slide. Look, but you have not so learned Christ, if so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. Next slide. Let's finish this. That you put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lust. So, so the first thing you got to do is undress. The first thing you have to do is undress. And so if I'm going to undress, if I'm going to undress, that means you got to strip yourself. You got to deal with yourself. Because, see, see, this is what we want to do. We want to put the application on God. God, take this away from me. God, remove this from me. God, deliver me from this. God, blah, 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 and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And we never, and listen, the whole time we keep going back and picking it up. We keep going involving ourselves in it. We are the ones who keep revisiting that thing, but we want God to stop us. He gave you everything for you to stop. He's given you everything for you to stop. Because if you really want to stop, if you really want God to stop you, do you really want God to stop you? Do you really, really, really want God to stop you? 
Like, 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 like if, if, if drinking was my issue and I wanted God to stop, do I really want cirrhosis of the liver? Do I really want that? No, I don't. We say diabetes. Yeah, that's why, that's why I haven't ate no sugar, because... Sugar is so corrupt. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, I can never go to Minister Brad's house again. He got a tub of sugar like this in his house. <laughs> that, that, that dude sprinkles sugar on mac and cheese. That dude, <laughs> that, dude, that dude sugar. I ain't never had sugar and mac and cheese that I've known of, right? <laughs> it's good, though. I ain't going to lie. I feel like a prune. I ain't had no sugar in so long. But, 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 but what, <laughs> huh? I can eat bacon. That you put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Like, 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 I talk different. I walk different. I think different. I am different. I am Christ in the earth. You see what I'm saying? I am the ambassador. I am, I do have the mind of Christ. You see, these are the things that you got to start saying to yourself. You got to strip yourself of the things that are keep revisiting you. There's some things about you that don't want to go away. And so because there's some things about you that don't want to go away, sometimes you just got to learn how to tell yourself no. 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 You, look, Teresa got me on this, 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 well, not really. I put myself on it. But she's like the keto police. I'm riding. It's been like 13 hours since I, I've ate, eaten anything. Long John Silver's Day's like dollar crab cakes Friday. I'm like, dang. <laughs> I, saw that, I saw that at 10 o'clock before they opened. I rolled back by again about 1.30. Dollar crab cake. I said, they open now. About 4 o'clock, I said, I better go in here before they close. <laughs> right? And then I OD'd, right? Then I called her later today. I said, babe, I had chocolate bar today. I had been three weeks, no sugar, no carbs, right? I said, babe, I had a Hershey bar. I had Long John Silvers. I had a soda. Uh, what else? What else? What else I tell you I had? Some fruit. It wasn't a cheat day. It was a breakdown. No, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere, I'm going somewhere, I'm going somewhere. It was a breakdown, right? I gave up. I was craving. I was enticed. That sign just was dollar crab cakes. And they not like crab cakes, they deep fried crab cakes. That, that wasn't no crab cake. I was mad when I got out, out of the drive through because that wasn't a crab cake. That was just uh, some deep fried frozen garbage. It was a dollar crab cake, no doubt. But what I'm getting at is, is what I'm getting at is that if you put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, doesn't mean the old man's not going to revisit you. It doesn't mean that you won't crave what the old man craves. It doesn't mean that you're not going to want to experience what the old man has experienced. So when you fall, listen, get up. Get up. Listen. Don't even talk about tomorrow, talk about the next moment. As soon as you get convicted, stop. As soon as you get convicted, stop. Don't be like, well, the day's blown now. Because tomorrow might be blown. And the next day might be blown. And then you find yourself in a backslidden position with all this knowledge of God, with all this power that, that is available to you, but because you won't tap in, you keep operating for months for months in a certain, certain way because you won't strip yourself. You gotta strip yourself. You gotta become naked before God. Come on, next slide. You gotta become naked for God because you gotta be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. You gotta strip yourself. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta take off that old stuff so you can put on the new stuff, right? And so it's not about acting like Jesus. It's about having a mindset of Christ. Because if you have the mindset of Christ, you'll talk like Christ. You'll act like Christ. You'll be Christ in the earth. But you got to strip yourself in order to put on this. 
Because this is the crazy part. God makes you righteous before you act righteously. You see what I'm saying? He gives you room to grow into these new clothes, right? Remember David. Remember David. Listen, look. remember David when he went to fight uh, Goliath. And Saul said, here, take my armor and put it on. He said, this doesn't fit. It's too big. I haven't proved this yet. The great thing about Jesus is when he puts his armor on you, you don't have to prove it. You don't have to prove his armor. You are righteous without proving it. But you got to grow up into it so you can operate with the armor. Amen? You got to grow up into it so you can operate with the armor. Christ doesn't make you prove yourself, right? And so because he is the proof of our righteousness, we are operate in him. And as we operate in him, now we walk in the true holiness that God has available, made available to us. You have to choose to live like Jesus and not choose to live like yourself. Because if you choose to live like Jesus, then you walk in the power of God. Before you can ever disciple anyone, you got to disciple yourself. Amen? Amen? Come on, give God praise. Give me the last slide, the last two slides. And we done. Keep going. Listen, we need to have appropriating faith in regards to God's promises. We must make God's word our own personal possession, right? A child was asked once what appropriating faith was, and the answer was, it is taking a pencil and underscoring all the me's and mine's and my's in the Bible. Next slide. Take any word you please that he has spoken and say, that word is my word. Put your finger on the promise and say, it is mine. How much of the word has been endorsed and receded and said, it is done? How many promises you can subscribe and say, fulfilled in me, fulfilled to me? So what this is saying is, you might not feel it, but if, as you put on a new man, as, how you appropriate faith. If the Bible says, if the Bible says, uh, thank you, Father, that your favor s surrounds me like a shield, and you don't feel like his favor surrounds you. you, you find that, it, because this is, all this is in the word, right? You find that in the word, and you put your finger on that thing and said, God's favor surrounds me like a shield. Regardless if you feel like it, regardless if you feel like you out here by yourself and the world is just chewing you up and using you, how you appropriate faith is that you believe it and you see it within before you see it in your hand. Amen? And so now, come on, next slide, because this is what it is. Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. Don't let your inheritance go by default. When faith goes to the market, it always takes a basket. Let me tell you something. What your faith is saying, what your faith is saying is, that's mine, and I have no money to buy it. It's mine. I possess it. See, listen, when, 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 when I was coming out of the world, and I was coming into the church, there were some things that were said to me that there was a, <laughs> my understanding wasn't where it is today, but when I stood in front of that judge and he was about to lock me up, I said, Lord, uh, uh, Lord, uh, excuse me, Your Honor, but I ain't going to jail today. He said, excuse me, young man. I said, I'm not going to jail today because the Bible says that I'm free. Well, that meant free in Christ, not free from jail. <laughs> but I didn't know any better. And he said, young man, I read that Bible you read, but you're going to jail today. I'm crying. No, I ain't. No, I ain't. I ain't going to jail today. The Bible says I'm free. He, 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 the judge looked at me and he said, you're not going to jail today. You're going to go to jail next week. And if you, if you don't sign this paper next week, we're going to trial. Right? Listen, listen. Listen, I didn't understand what I was saying, but I was operating in faith. I was saying I'm not going to jail today. Next week came. He sentenced me, right? Then he said, you're going to get another week. Get your house in order, young man, because you're going to jail next week. I got in jail and said, I'm not standing here. This jail can't hold me, right? L listen to me. I put in for ho house arrest. They said, oh, no. You will be here for the whole six months. I'm playing cards. I'm playing spades, Aaron, without you. <laughs> I learned how to play without you. 
I used to say to them, don't y'all get used to this, me cracking y'all's head because I ain't going to be here long. They said, man, you got turned down. You're going to be here with us for the whole six months. I said, no, I'm not in Jesus' name. I don't know how. They didn't tur they've turned me down. I don't know how I'm getting out of here, but I'm telling them every day. I'm not going to be here long, right? I'm going to Bible study. I'm reading my word. I'm getting up 5 o'clock in the morning, sitting at the table, hoodie on, pen, notebook. Same thing I was doing before I went to jail. Pen, notebook. All of a sudden, the superintendent of the jail starts getting his hair cut at Teresa's salon. At the chair next to her. She says, you know, my husband is Jamal Cooper. Babe, the superintendent of the jail is getting his hair cut. I'm coming from work release. Because, you know, the jail wouldn't want to let me go because they wanted my money. They wanted to send me to work so they could get my money. I see the superintendent coming. I'm, I'm dirty. Grease all over my face. Grease all over my body. I'm, I'm slinging alternators and starters. That's the superintendent right there. Oh, I said, that's the superintendent? Yeah. I said, Superintendent Brand, how you doing, sir? I'm Jamal, the guy that gets, you, you get your hair cut in my wife's salon. I just want to put a face with who she's talking about. You have a nice day. Two weeks I was sitting on my couch, man. He called me on the red phone. They said, Cooper, you got to call on the red phone. You got the black phones, the red phones internal. And so he said, uh, Mr. Cooper, this is Superintendent Brandt. Um, I'm going to send you to either a halfway house or home. If you go to a halfway house, you don't have to wear an ankle bracelet. If you go home, you, get, you have to wear an ankle bracelet. I said, uh, can I go to church? He said, yes. I said, my church is in Martinsburg. I'm living in Winchester. Can I, can I cross state lines? What time will you be home? I said, about 3 o'clock. Yes, you can go to church. He said, I said, um, can I go to Walmart? He said, yeah. I said, I can go to any grocery store? Yeah, just let us know before you go. I said, OK. Can I go get a haircut? He said, yeah, that's all my life was now. Church, grocery store, haircut. I was settled. I would stripped myself of all that other stuff. I hung up the phone, and I said, I told y'all I was going home in Jesus' name. I told y'all I was going home in Jesus' name. It's Friday. I went home on Monday, right? I walked in the house. Teresa was staying there. She was like, yeah, 70 days. I did 70 days when I was supposed to do six months. And the reason why was because I kept telling them, they turned me down. But God orchestrated, right? God was in the backdrop, appropriately allowing my faith to be appropriated. Yeah, I kept speaking it. I kept believing it. And so it was. If you decree a thing, it shall be. Amen? If you decree a thing, it shall be. And I was doing according to the word of God. You know what I did Sunday morning? I went to church. Did I ever leave? No. The reason why I never left is because I'm standing in front of you right now. I just kept appropriating the faith. When faith goes to the market, it always takes a basket. Amen? Come on, give God praise.